Hey, this is John, and in this video, we'll be exploring the benefits of and arguments for practicing polyamory. Well, of course, the most obvious benefit of polyamory is the opportunity to develop deep, intimate, romantic, and or sexual relationships with multiple people. It allows people to explore a depth of relationships with others on multiple levels that would normally be limited to just one person in a monogamous relationship. It allows people to not have their capacity for love stifled by a partner, and maybe more, more importantly, to not stifle their partner's capacity for love. Now, alongside this is the feeling of NRE, or new relationship energy. You know, that unmistakable, unmatchable intensity of falling in love with someone for the first time. And there might be no greater or more ecstatic feeling in the whole world, but a conventional relationship dynamic like monogamy would only allow for this feeling once in a relationship, maybe once in a lifetime. And in contrast, polyamory makes room for NRE again and again and again, even while possibly maintaining a sustained relationship with a primary polyamorous partner. Now, polyamorous relationships allow for our romantic needs to be satisfied by multiple people. We usually have several friends to satisfy our diverse social needs. One friend to go rock climbing with, another friend to go dancing with, but in monogamy, we don't tend to extend this diversification to our romantic needs. We expect that one person will be able to satisfy all of our complex sexual and romantic needs, but honestly, this is rarely the case, as evidenced by just how rampant infidelity and divorce are. And this is one of the most convincing arguments for polyamory, that its alternative, monogamy, appears to be widely failing. I mean, in the US alone, more than half of marriages end in divorce. And it's been reported that 20 to 40% of these divorces were caused by infidelity. Nearly half of all married women and more than half of all married people report having cheated on their spouse. Imagine how many marriages could have been saved, how many families would not have been disrupted by the turbulence of divorce, and how many children wouldn't have been raised by single parents if couples simply agreed to open up their relationship and explore polyamory as an alternative to cheating, as an alternative to divorce. Polyamory also allows for our practical needs to be filled by multiple people, like grocery shopping, or cleaning the house, or sharing multiple incomes, or even raising children. Another benefit of polyamory is that, contrary to popular belief, many couples actually report that polyamory strengthens their primary relationship. That's likely due, at least in part, to the level of intense communication needed to sustain a healthy polyamorous relationship. Conversations that often don't arise in a conventional, traditional, monogamous relationship. You know, in order for a polyamorous relationship to be su successful, it's necessary for both partners to regularly and consistently communicate clearly about their desires, about their fears, about their insecurities, their boundaries, and their needs in a way that very few monogamous partners are ever forced to. And by navigating these incredibly choppy and difficult waters of attraction and fear and insecurity and jealousy, polyamorous couples discover their ability to approach other challenging situations with non-judgmental communication compassion, patience, respect, and love. In addition to strengthening their primary relationships, many proponents of polyamory say that practicing it helps them refine and deepen all of their relationships. This intense communication required helps them break down and move through many barriers to their expansion as a loving human being. A large part of this expansion is in working through painful emotions like jealousy. Many proponents of monogamy actually point to romantic and sexual jealousy as evidence of polyamory being unnatural or wrong. But our cultural ideas of possessiveness are very often exclusive to romance. That is, we clearly value sharing over possessiveness in general in society. We teach our children to share, and we scold our children for being selfish. We look down on and condemn selfish and stingy people. We rally against hoarders and protest inequalities. We praise people for generosity and value selflessness and giving as a virtue. But 
We don't, for some reason, normally extend this sharing mentality to our romantic partnerships. In fact, many social norms encourage us to be possessive and selfish of our partners, unwilling to see them with other people. Now, contrary to our emotional instincts like jealousy, sharing our partners could actually lead to quite a lot of joy. I mean, it's possible to find joy in seeing a romantic partner experience pleasure with another person. And there's a word for this joy in the world of polyamory, compersion. This is a word that did not exist before polyamorists found the need to invent one. Compersion is often defined as a feeling of joy when a partner invests in and takes pleasure from another romantic or sexual relationship, the opposite of jealousy, a positive emotional reaction to a lover's other relationship. Polyamory allows us to break through and move past selfish impulses and emotions towards a more open and arguably more selfless way of being. 